Eric Cedillo is on the live line right now. Eric is an immigration attorney, and it's uh, been fascinating in the wake of the Paris terror attacks, Eric, that uh, we have more and more governors, at last count 27 now in this country, that say uh, we're not interested in having any Syrian refugees in our state. I suppose we start with, is that legal? Can they do that? Can they make that block? Yeah, actually, I think it's up to 31. But uh, I don't believe they do. I don't have. I don't believe that the governors have the ability to block uh, refugees from being resettled into their particular states. That power, of course, is vested in the uh, in the uh, uh, of course the federal government via the president of the United States. He has the uh, uh, through the supremacy clause has the ability and the Refugee Act of 1980 to place those folks in um, really any state that he wants. Now, of course, the governors can make it more difficult. You know, they can do things that uh, that make it harder. Uh, by not cooperating with the federal government, but ultimately uh, I don't believe they have any legal standing to prevent uh, the placement of refugees in their particular state. Most of the polling that I've looked at, whether it be here in Ohio or other places, uh, and again, I know a lot of polling is not scientific, but to this point, I've not seen too many polls that say, yeah, bring on the Syrian refugees. Do you think this kind of thing might start, uh, you know, some more legal action, like an overturning of that 1980 law? Well, quite honestly, that's a possibility with respect to the, the current Congress that we have. But I don't think so. I think the, uh, I think the act itself, it's of course an amendment to the Immigration and National Al- Nationality Act. That would take some doing. It would take some, uh, some actual push from Congress to make that happen or make that change happen. Uh, and we're dealing with, you know, something that's going on currently. These, these refugees are currently being vetted. I mean, there's, it's, it's been going on for a period of time now. So I think it's going to happen before any congressional action might be taken. Uh, but of course, you know, the states, the governors making this appeal saying they don't want uh, refugees in their state, that can have a chilling effect on the actual placement of refugees in their particular state. So, you know, although probably politically motivated it might be effective and and having the president place them in in, uh, other states that are more welcoming eric cedillo our guest he's an immigration attorney i mean you you deal with this professionally do you think fear of syrian refugees given world events given what we know about the few that have come to this country is it even appropriate i mean is it just knee-jerk or should we be uh healthily skeptical of the quality of people coming from that country well, you always want to be careful. What what people need to understand is that refugees coming to this country, they're the most highly vetted category of folks that kind of come on over. It takes usually between 18 to 24 months for the vetting process to, to go through. They initially start with the United Nations, uh, which makes them candidates for the possibility of coming to the United States. And then, you know, the Department of State does its vetting process, you know, through the uh, Homeland Security, through the National Counterterrorism Center, through the FBI. It's an incredibly vetted process. So it isn't like, uh, you know, some other situations where, you know, perhaps even uh, student visas, people who, who uh, ask for student visas, that's going to be more of a, a program that would probably be a lot less vetted. So the actual Syrian refugees coming over are going to be, you know, some of the most highly vetted uh, individuals in terms of uh, the entry into the country. So people need to understand that. And quite honestly, you know, there, although the president has said 10,000 over the next 12 months, that, that process of vetting is already going on. So they're really looking into it. And contrary to, to what uh, some of the media outlets are saying, quite honestly, the Syrian people, maybe not the government, but the Syrian people are, are relatively highly documented people. You'll be able to look into military service and things of that nature. But there's always that small possibility of, of uh, you know, someone sneaking in. So sure. it is a situation where we need to be a little bit more careful. And given your profession and what you do, Eric, day to day, you feel like that vetting process that uh, the U.N. and our, our gut nation's government does, you feel like it's, uh, it's appropriate and they do a good job? I think so, absolutely. Uh, like I say, especially in this situation, I think they're they're probably even going to take additional steps with respect to who they bring over. And the president has some authority and some some guidelines and guidance that uh, uh, that could even make it more specific, maybe age appropriate. I know he's mentioned certainly not taking religion into account, which which I think is totally uh, uh, appropriate on the president's behalf. Uh, but, you know, perhaps we, we start with uh, women and children, and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that have been displaced over there. And, yeah. and they're in some really dire straits, so they need help. And, and one more, since you mentioned women and children, uh, yesterday the president was on record as saying Republicans are scared of widows and orphans. Uh, in your experience, this this kind of, you know, the refugees coming here, is it generally women and kids 
that come, or is it a wide range? You're probably going to get a lot of applications. There's going to be a lot of people applying for refugee status. It doesn't mean uh, the United States can't pick and choose. And quite honestly, that is a high probability that that women and children will be a lot less uh, of a consider a concern. So that that may be where we start in terms of uh, who we allow first. Okay, good stuff, Eric. I appreciate the time very much, Eric Cedillo, immigration attorney on News Radio 610 WTVN.